the morning show. Baby boy, Elijah, mm. good morning, America, mm. and Mexico, and Mexico. Canada. Whoa, whoa, real quick, real quick. This is an interesting topic. We're not going to go d- down this one, but is is Mexico siding with China? Shit. Did you see that one? Did, did you motherfucker <laughs> see that one? Yo. We can't. We better not. We better not. No, yeah. You, we know, what we you, you know what I'm saying? Because we have too many fucking people in the United States. I feel like, if anything, United States is… I love that. Is the next home for all Mexicans. You know, like, there's the majority of the United States is like, you know… Especially the West… You know, yeah. it's lots of Mexicans, but right by the border. Yeah, I mean, well, like California used to be part of Mexico, Texas, and um, Colorado. Tex-Mex, yeah. So, no doubt, but damn, I don't. That hey, shit, man, that's this, a Monday morning topic right there. Yeah, God damn boy, we better not. We better not get into that though. Yeah, like, oh, I no, do not want us to have Chinese like. Oh no! You want your kids to speak Mandarin? Then we better speak. Then we better stay with the goddamn United For States of America, bro. No, I'm with it. I'm pro. I'm pro. Uh, pro America. Pro. I'm pro Chicano. Yeah. I'll no, say that. I'm pro pro all that. <laughs> I love it all. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what I love more? Or, you know, segues in uh Chicano women. You know, and when I think about mm. Chicano women, Mexican women, Latino women. Mm, go on. Beautiful. Ah, Luscious. Just, uh, amazing. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Is uh, you know, Playboy. The yes. first the first goddamn uh magazine business company, you know, that promoted women empowerment, women. You know, uh, what do they what do they go as? It's kind of like a adult content, adult, yeah, adult, adult content, the adult industry. You know, the first the first even people like, to do it well. Too. Yeah, I mean, sexuality too. You know, what that of course. just the whole, the whole magazine was based on was sexuality, women. You know, nudity. Um, women are beautiful, and then their bodies and stuff like that. Mm. Playboy was very innovative early, early, early on. And um, have you? Have you ever looked through a Playboy magazine? Of course. Okay. Uh, besides all of the great, I mean, we love it, nudity, uh, amazing stuff like that. But besides all that, did you ever like read the articles or anything like that? I think they were, I like, honestly, like Playboy magazines were only around me when I was like too young to read them. I probably was oh, just okay. more looking you're, at the You're images. a picture person. You're just yeah, looking I'm at I'm a the- visual learner. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying, brother? Yeah. Oh, I know what you're saying there, brother. Uh, no, uh, if you ever read the magazine, which I think is important for everybody to check out a Playboy magazine, not just because of the nudity or the adult content, any of that stuff, but they're very informative as far as like the articles they write. It's yeah. like, you know, they're pro sex, pro like, you know, j- j- you know, pro um, sexuality, bro. Like sexuality, exploring yourself and stuff like that. Women yeah. exploring themselves, men. Yep. Like, you know, they're just, they cover it all and and they do a really good job of it and no and doubt. reading through the articles like you know it's not it's all, not all funny business people think playboy and all that the whole adult industry is like funny business yeah. it's not funny business like they actually care about you know their consumers or their customers everybody so um i mean i love playboy magazines and i have a couple you know not for not for those reasons but because i love design i love you know the whole aspect to that, and yeah. I think Playboy, especially like their marketing and yeah. and within the magazines and and how they promote their Playboy, uh, is it's phenomenal, dude. They do no, a great job. I agree, I, I completely. And even the logo, the Playboy Bunny logo, that it's been um a staple. That logo is priceless, yeah. dude. And it's it's like every everyone knows it, and people use it for different reasons. Not even Playboy anymore. Like it's like Playboy doesn't even own the logo. Like you see it everywhere. You see it on shirts. Yeah. You see it on earrings. People get it tattooed on them. You feel me? Like, Without even knowing what it means or like even like kind of like what it is, honestly. Yeah. And like the logo has exceeded. It's like it's mm. become bigger than what it it, it was um made for. Mm. And, you know, Playboy was um, a magazine for men's entertainment. Yeah. You know, and it was back then in those times. That's when like you had to read like magazines and yeah, like yeah, yeah. read that's, the newspaper to yeah, get exactly. your information. So… Obviously, I, you know, like kind of now where we're at. And now like, you guys watch the Skeleton Podcast to get your information, goddammit. Am I yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> we're the new Playboys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just about. We just need a magazine to to, to, to make it full circle. For real, huh? But yeah, and it, it, it meant entertainment. And I, I think that um, it's, it was very informative. And it's dope that it's kind of like, you know, it's died down a little bit recently. Because magazines mm-hmm. aren't as popular as they used to be at one point. No. And it seems like… Now, as of lately, a lot of, you know, magazines, like even New York Times or something like that, a lot of them have their own digital forms of yeah, entertainment or news. 
before we go into this digital topic, I do want to talk about what we on right now. The magazines, the old, the old version of how to get your information, the old advertising um, stream. Like that's why when you look through magazines, there's all these ads, you know, because it was the only media where a company could get to the consumer because there was no, you know, besides the television, there was no like phones and, yeah. and applications where they yep. could use. So that's why it's dying out, and and you know you don't see as much. Well, I mean, you still see them in magazines, but it's not the preferred method to reach, uh, especially a young audience. Yeah. Because you know, I don't think I think if you were to ask a young person under the age of maybe eighteen if they've ever read a magazine or like flip through a magazine that wasn't you know some easy something like mm -hmm. it, you know actual like you know maybe like a Sports Illustrated or a Playboy magazine or a you know, any just any sort of magazine, I feel like they would probably say no or yeah. just skim through it and look yeah. through the pictures. Like they there's just nobody's doing that. Yeah, agree. Right. But um it's interesting now that all the money's not there. So like we're going into this new era of Playboy, which we'll talk about right now. But what we're gonna be first talking about is this cover. Playboy started in nineteen fifty three. Had Marilyn Manson or not Manson. Monroe. Whoa, 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 Monroe on yeah. the cover. Imagine if it was Marilyn Manson though. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, and that girl was like such so influential back at that time in the fifties and sixties, and mm -hmm. her acting career and her singing and stuff like that. And then the whole thing she had with uh, Robert Kennedy, I mean John F. Kennedy, and that supposedly she was sleeping with him and stuff. And that was such a controversial thing at that time. I remember, but um, Marilyn Monroe, like she was a woman that was an embodiment of what Playboy meant. You know, of empowerment, course. a woman making plays, mm -hmm. taking care of shit. And she was like multi-talented. She didn't just do one thing. She just wasn't just a pretty girl. No, she, she did movies. Wasn't. She did singing. She did all of it. And, and then that's yeah. and it's crazy that this was their first issue ever because I feel like it kind of um, foreshadows the, the their trajectory. You know, like where the magazine ended up going. Because I mean, it it's still like even after this came out, like it was a very influential magazine. I think. I mean, I don't know how they made this happen but For to real? have Marilyn Monroe first cover issue uh wow you know and that just I mean you just said her career is great she was an amazing woman did amazing things and and it just symbolizes almost like beautiful you know, too yeah an empowered woman and I, I mean we see it nowadays with like you know the Kim K family like a lot of the majority of people if you ask them like you know a high status woman it's either Kim K uh, lay lay them down. Um, Kim K, like that whole family, Kardashian yeah. family. Um, what's the other one? Um, the shows. Um, um, out of like shows, like reality TV shows, or you mean in general? No, like the what's that one? It's like the Ellen one, but it's not Ellen. It's like uh, the Oprah Winfrey show. Oh, Oprah you know, Winfrey, it's like yeah. Oprah Winfrey. Um, Kim K, like there's a lot of like women that you think about, and it's like those are the women you think when you think about like high status women, yeah, Kylie Jenner, stuff like that, yeah, yeah, know. yeah, 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 all of that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I thought it was interesting that like they chose the woman that symbolizes that, like, like literally, it's like cream of the crop, you know what I'm saying? It's like, but uh, yeah, it's interesting, I find that cool. And like, one thing I want to point out because you know, I, I look into shit, but like the make the makeup. That she has like the big red lips mm. and then the curly hair like the very like lit wave luscious hair and shit like yeah. that like that's definitely in the 50s like oh, that's yeah, some yeah, real yeah. 50s shit right there like and that's cool though like i like i like their photo the pose it's cool like that's what's up she looks like she's enjoying herself oh yeah she's great <laughs> <laughs> all right so th this just opens the topic because we, what we really wanted to talk about was the new platform that playboy's putting out right yep um which the next slide goes into this. It's called Centerfold, the new platform that Playboy is, you know, coming out with. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and read this for you guys. Um, just follow us through and uh, let's do this together. Ahead of the platform's kickoff, Playboy signed Cardi B as its first ever creative director in residence for the lifestyle brand. Notable, found, or notable founding Centerfold members include Amanda... Or there's a couple of people. I don't know who those people are. Playboy then goes on to give out a tweet. It says, it's centerfold day. We're working hard to get to the site up and running, but it may, may take a lot of many steps to make a great leap into the future. They're alluding to the, you know, moon landing, uh, small step for mankind, <laughs> big change for, what do they say? Yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm check back here for the official. So they're, they're basically just announcing the launch of centerfold. It says, 
In addition to the most prominent features of the App Centerfold, also includes mirrored e-commerce integration that leverages Playboy's various business ventures. Creators and subscribers will be able to tap into Yandi, the popular online lingerie swimwear and apparel store, uh, or shop products offered by Honey Bridge, a high-end lingerie brand similar to Victoria's Secret. Wow. So let's just unpack this for the people, yeah. right? So Centerfold, I mean, Playboy releases Centerfold. It's a new platform. They say they're going to do, uh, it's a similar subscription um, subscription platform like OnlyFans. Yes, like literally uh, the same thing. But not only is it just that, they say they're going to integrate uh, mirrored e-commerce, which is, you know, like uh, shopping. Yeah. And they have big companies on it. They say Yandi, Honey Bridget. I mean, I don't know those companies, but I'm pretty sure the women do. Yeah. And you know what? I'm not, I'm not, I know if OnlyFans is, I don't, I've never been on their site. So I don't know if they have advertisement while you're scrolling through the girls, like looking for the content. Mm. But I find that very interesting that the, how are they going to set that up with like having advertisement or can you pay for advertising? Kind of sounds like, like, uh, it kind of sounds like they're still doing a magazine, but just literally online. And it it's still mm -hmm. having like, you can look up girls and like, have their content or whoever else, you know, whoever else has content on there. Um, and, you know, it's even Cardi B being the first ever creative director, like, she, that's very edgy of her, you know, because she's yeah. been, she's been in politics before. She's done a lot of things with Bernie Sanders and stuff like that, mm -hmm. endorsing him and um, even her music. Even like I know that her music is very edgy and it's like girl, you know, it's like girl stuff, like mm -hmm. twerking and shaking ass and stuff like that, like being a bad bitch. And then she went from that to the Bernie Sanders thing. And then she's going from that back to like this. Mm -hmm. I think that's really cool for her. And I think yeah. that like even her as a woman, she can wear those hats, you know, she doesn't yeah. always have to be like super like political and like like yeah like you know it's like hey you know she got that raunchy ratchet shit going on and that's what she got on for yep so it's in her that's her um pretty excited to see what she's gonna do with this because if she's gonna be a creative director like how what where is she gonna go with it and like all mm -hmm. that stuff i think i mean big okay. ups to her playboy the start of the magazine that's kind of the start of the adult industry right yep um, maybe now women are, you know, getting paid to do things, you know, for, for magazine covers, photo shoots, all these things. The money's there. It's starting to arise. We're at a point now where Playboy is trying to introduce something that's for, you know, the, the, the new, the new age, you know, mm -hmm. it's more, it's on your phone probably in any sort of, you know, electronic device instead of like a physical magazine. Yeah. But throughout that process, that gap from 1953, that they said to now 2023, it's been a lot, a lot of fighting and pushing and pulling to get kind of the adult industry from being less taboo uh, to being like more accepted. accepted. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and I think them cho choosing Cardi B was like a play to get like not because I mean her demographic is obviously like young women and and uh, and and just women in general. Obviously, I mean I, I don't know any guys that listen to Cardi B. Yeah. That maybe I mean I do maybe a collab or something but I mean, that's the majority of her audience yeah so I can see why they would you know introduce her but it's interesting like you said because it's a taboo space where they feel don't worry about it there's a taboo space where they feel like you know sometimes people are like oh we can't talk about that we can't do that we can't you know say that but it's for her to be like no we're gonna you know we're gonna be pro sex we're gonna be pro adult content format and we're gonna push this it's just interesting to see. It's like we're kind of breaking it down for being so taboo to now accept it. Yeah, and I think if there's anybody that that would that would definitely fit that image is her. Yeah. To be honest, because of like her character, her her the way she moves, the way she acts, her music and stuff, lyrical content. Great pick. Great pick <laughs> I think it was behalf. the pick. <laughs> yeah. Great pick. And you know, this is something. Creating Centerfold, you know, and it's it, it, it's pretty much the same thing as OnlyFans is something I think Playboy should have done years ago. Dude, they're fucking late to the game. Honestly, they kind of shot themselves in the foot for that. Yep. Because they've allowed this whole network of people to go to OnlyFans. And pe and that's doing great. People are making money. People love it over there. Um, So, like, now they're like, hey, uh, yeah, our platform is just as good. It's like, dude, you're like, you're late to the fucking game, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. You should have been the innovator they, of yeah, this. Yeah, they should have like, done it. Yeah, they should have. Like, they are basically the starters of this whole industry. Yeah. So, like, why, why are they not ahead of the game? I don't know. 
Yeah, and I mean, like they're doing it now, but it definitely feels like OnlyFans was was like the the they innovated that they started that type of platform, and they've been very successful at it. Obviously, because you go on Instagram and all all these girls have OnlyFans accounts. Yeah. Um, it's just like what what was going on with them? Were they just holding on to the past of like the magazine type stuff, and they just didn't want to know how to let go of that? Or like when Hugh Hefner died, they just didn't have any direction mm. on where to take the platform and stuff. Because, I mean, Playboy was you know infamous back in the days for having events. Yep, the Playboy Mansion, the Playboy Bunnies. They would hire girls, and the girls would you know they were like pretty much living at the mansion with Hugh Hefner. Yeah, and I mean he's very a controversial guy. I mean, as now, you know, but regardless, that was part of the the history of Playboy. Um, I know it just kind of makes me think, like, why didn't they do it before? Like, what, 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 and why now? And I guess why now? It's cool that they're doing it, yeah. but it definitely took some time. To Can get I there. say something after doing the research? Because hey, man, we got to go through the stuff. We have to look to the website. We have to understand what we're kind of getting into. Yep. I mean, I don't know if you remember, but they started to address the people that were the. Uh, the models or the people making the content on the platform on their platform centerfold as as the bunnies, right? Yep. And it seems like because you have to you have to not audition for it, but you have to apply to be a bunny. Yep. So I think what it's gonna it's gonna be like when it comes to adult form content, it's gonna be like because I, I would say OnlyFans is maybe gonna be like the raunchy like anybody can do, yeah. and then maybe Playboy is gonna be like, hey, we're off class here. Let's fucking get some. You know, and I I think that would be their best their best thing to do yeah. to like um only have certain type of women on there. So yeah. it's like it's like OnlyFans is right here, and then Playboy or Centerfold will be right here, mm. and it's kind of like the upper echelon of like yeah. It's like dude, you're on OnlyFans, you're a freaking weirdo, yeah. bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, oh yeah, it's like, much. It's yeah. like dude, like you're not Centerf- popping. Centerfold is where the high classness is at, yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? The Pinky's class- up over there. <laughs> high class nudity, like, yeah, yeah. So it. <laughs> But, hey, hey, we got to talk about you guys. You know, I, I know there's a couple of people that might be like current, like, you know, we're talking about the adult content yeah. porn industry, but it's like, hey, man. It's part of the world. It's part of the world. It's a booming business. Makes billions of dollars. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of behind the scenes. No doubt. And one thing you pointed out earlier that I really liked was the taboo of like pornography and like yeah. nudity, especially like in the 50s or like 60s, 70s, how like obviously like People like to fuck, bro. Like, people like sex. Mm. It's always been very taboo pornography. And I think right now, if there's a time for, like, obviously, like, OnlyFans, but, like, for a Playboy to step it up, it's right now because pornography and, like, sex and stuff has become less and less taboo. And even nowadays, you have a lot of, um, like, women that were, you know, porn models and stuff like that or actors that have careers in acting now or like careers in, in movies that, you know, you have like Mia Khalifa that, you know, she she got out of that. You have that, um, the girl from Euphoria. There was a girl in Euphoria. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was in- um, The Caucasian girl. Yeah, she was in porn and like now she does acting. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of those girls are very open about their experiences in, in pornography and like their and their journey through it. And it seems like a lot of them have a following now outside of porn too. Like they do oh, yeah. podcasts, they have their own brands, and they people actually are fans of their personalities. You know, they live stream. Yeah. So if there's a time for this to hit like hard and hit good and s- solid, it's right now. Yeah. And it's because we like to think that the people, you know, behind the camera, like, you know, on the camera. Or like some sort of cyborg, like they yeah. have no sort of emotions or feelings, or and they're not they're not human. But then you see like a porn star do a podcast and talk about like regular day stuff, and like she's actually articulate and like super interesting and stuff. And you're like, oh wow, she actually is a human. And it's like, yeah. You know, and but I think that's great that we're kind of breaking that, that down that barrier and saying like, you know, it doesn't matter what you do, you know. As long as you're a good person. Good person, hard worker, you could do the job. Yeah. You know, let's fit you in for the spot. Yeah. And I, and I say cahoots with that because that, that's great, bro. It's like, I want to see yeah. more of that, you know? It's, it's inclusive. I think I think that's where we're headed to, a, a more inclusive state. No doubt. And they they got to take advantage and they, they need to fuck the game up right here because they yeah. have a shot. They will. I honestly think yeah, they will. Yeah, they will. Yeah. They, Playboy, I mean. Playboy, get at me. Uh, <laughs> baby boy cover? Oh, whoa, whoa. No cap. <laughs> no cap. 
<laughs> we might see you in a robe. <laughs> For real, my boy just six packed up. You feel me? Like on my That'd on my fifty cent shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, the next one. So this is just a picture. To, uh, this is on their website. Nothing new. Just kind of them promoting the, uh, it says, the new era of the magazine, which is Playboy. Um, on the cover of their website, this is like a video. And it kind of reminded me of like NFTs. Yeah, it does, huh? Right? It's like yeah. a picture. And yeah, that kind of, that was pretty funny. But uh, yeah, everything's transitioning into like this new digital state, right? Yeah. I mean, it's inevitable. We're, we're in a digital state right yeah, now. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Um, you know, we're seeing the adult industry get into it. We're seeing companies get into it. Nike, Adidas, a couple of our big companies have already trademarked their their apparel and like their companies, basically their brand in the metaverse, which is a uh, you know a non non physical place. It's a uh, uh, it's in the metaverse. So I don't know how yeah. to explain that. It's like augmented reality, virtual reality. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like what's to be. Yeah. When it comes to you know technology and interacting with humans and stuff like that yeah the metaverse yeah so it's basically um it's like club penguin man but you could actually go there uh put on your vr set and 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 you know shop some real sim out. shit it's, you know it's it's like the sims but it's interesting to see that like, all these big players like you know trademarking their companies in like a non-physical place you know we're seeing play but when you get into a market that's you know it's electronic it's the subscription models it's you know promoting models you know not on magazines but on phones and yeah like, you know the advertisements the money's all on your phone it's crazy to see man we might transition into like some craziness and we can go down that rabbit hole baby boy but i don't know if you want to go down that one i'm with it Oh God! Oh God! All right, all right. I mean, because my personal perspective on it is like <laughs> what you have, what we have nowadays is that like I think we, well, like night, like you said, like these big brands like Nike, Adidas, and stuff like that. I mean, the metaverse is the future because like Nike is the, a lot of these companies have plateaued and they've peaked already. They're oh, like, yeah. you know, when you see a Nike symbol, you see the Nike check. You you are automatically know what it is. You know, when you yeah. hear swoosh, you think of Nike. You know. The Jordan logo, like these companies are solidified and they've reached the max, like I feel like potential that they they ever have. So the next thing is obviously like the metaverse, you know. Yeah. And that's what that's, do you think? Any company, Nike, we, we'll go over from Nike. What do you think they they make more? Do you think they make more sell in retail or online? I feel like right now online for sure, because mm -hmm. like. You got the reselling shit going on. I mean, and it's online. It's more accessible. You have more options when you go into retail, and then you, they only have a few sizes. They only have a few colorways, and mm. uh, who the who the fuck wants that? You know, you want to, you want, you see a shoe you want, you want to buy it. You like the color, you want to buy it. Yeah. So would you say that the online, uh, buying stuff online is like more efficient, more organized, more fast? Would you say that? Yeah, definitely efficient, fast, and you can get what you need, but it might not fit. That's true. But uh, I think the whole purpose of using online, like, you know, we transitioned from retail to now online, was to make it more fast, more efficient, more easy, accessible. If you have Wi-Fi connection, you can pretty much buy anything you want, right? Yeah. And uh, it'll be delivered into your house between, you know, one to seven business days. If, you know, but if you need it right now, you can go to the physical lake location. Um I find it interesting that, you know, because the metaverse, because, uh, you know, that's kind of the next step as far as like uh, retail or, or you know, brands, companies. Uh, I find it interesting that we're going to be in a platform, an area where we're, we're going to be able to go to the store in the metaverse, you know, see it on our avatar or whatever. Or like even just like go to the store and then buy it and it'll get shipped to our house. I think we're maybe just trying to make shit more efficient. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it, and. I'm okay with that, but also too, it's like, where does it stop? I think it doesn't. No? I think it just keeps going. What's after the metaverse? That's what we got to find out. And then that's where we got to invest. The <laughs> we got to invest the there. Metaverse. It might be like the fucking fifth dimension or something. And that's how we humans are. What's next? <laughs> you know, humans were like that. We want what's yeah. next. What's next? What's hot? What's popping? What's not? You know, so. Yeah, our brains are like, all right, this is cool. What's next? Uh, it's like, fuck. <laughs> nah, and then, um. Have you ever, like, you know, to ask you, like, have you ever been done VR and stuff like that? Like, I'm have not, you ever well, engaged in that? I've tried it on. For sure, I've played a game, maybe. But mm -hmm. um, I've never done anything crazy. Have you? 
No, I have not. But I just think for us, because like we come from that generation where like we know what it is to have technology, but we also know what it is to not have it. Mm. So to us, I feel like the VR stuff wouldn't hit too much. Yeah. Metaverse stuff. But like maybe a kid that's 10 right now or, you know, like 13, 8, yeah. they're going to be a lot more. I kind of, well, it's it's very hard to compete with the actual physical world though. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because like, the thing that turns me off about the whole VR shit is like, I can't spend 10 to 12 hours in the virtual reality. Yeah. You know, like you could spend 10 to 12 hours in real life just scrolling through your phone and chilling. But like, are you really going to be like standing up, moving around and doing all kinds of crazy shit for 10 to 12 hours and, and you know, the yeah. metaverse? Like I yeah. can't see myself doing that. I think they're going to make that easier at one point yeah. where you don't have to like be standing up and stuff. Like they'll probably make they it should, bro. so you could s sit down. But… Yeah, that might be that Neuralink shit, my yes, boy. But like, and we're, we won't get into that because that's like some yeah, like far yeah, off yeah. shit. But like, what I what I do want to say is that like, like I said, like we were we're we were part of a generation where we understand like what it is to have technology and mm -hmm. what it is to not. The younger generation, they're not going to be hip to that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, like playing video games or being like in the metaverse, it's an escape for a lot of people from their reality. For sure. So they'd rather tap in into a game or something like that and get their little like kickoff mm -hmm. and just stay stay in that bitch. So you, I'm, I feel like you're going to be surprised, but a lot of people would hey rather man, be Hey man, I've been there, man. I've been in <laughs> Keener de Toten with the homies on the Xbox <laughs> 360. You know what I'm saying? But for I've real. been there, done that, my boy. Yeah. And I'm, I, I fuck with that shit for real. Exactly. That's what I was trying to tell you. But like, and that was just a taste. You that get me? That was just a taste. God, but, that was, that was, yeah, that was just a sample. Yes. <laughs> but if they make some shit that's more addicting, more harder, more fucking crazier, you're going to stick. You're going to stay your ass in there. Ah, uh, shit. They you're got me, guys. And you're stuck. You might be seeing Playboy in there. I'm you hoping. might be seeing the Snow Bunnies in there. Snow Bunnies. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. So, I mean, we Playboy, the conversation, you know, not only goes from the, uh, the new emergence of not a magazine, but a virtual state of this content. It transitions to… The metaverse, kind of what's the next step as far as industries and where they lie beyond just physical reality. Um, yeah, man. I I think it's great, dude. Honestly, I love techno technological innovation. I find it makes our life easier, makes our life more better. Yeah. Sometimes it makes us even happier. Yeah. You know, so I'm all for that, man. And and will I be on the Playboy? Uh, what is it? The Playboy… Um, Magazine? Centerfold. Centerfold. Probably not, my brother, but you sinful motherfuckers, you well, can. Yeah. <laughs> you you guys will, god damn it. <laughs> yeah, for real. And um I'm excited to see like um hopefully I cause Playboy kinda lost that prestige. Like back in the day, like when a girl was like a Playboy bunny, it was like something to brag about. Yeah. And as of lately, it's it, it's definitely lost that. I wonder if now with the centerfold if that's going to come back into play and like a girl can actually like use it as a flex. Like, oh, I'm a That's going to be that crazy. And see, this is, bro, this is great. Get this it, is boy. great. Bro, that's what it's going to turn into because you know how everybody has an OnlyFans and shit? Playboy is only going to be selective of like, you're you're a Playboy bunny. You're a Playboy bunny. Yeah, oh, upper you echelon. Do this. Yeah, type shit. And yeah. then that's what it's going to be, bro. It's like, oh, like, oh, she does OnlyFans. But like, she she's not a Playboy bunny. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, shit. Oh, sh and before you know it, it's going to be are you a Playboy bunny or not? You know what I'm saying? It'll be a, it'll be a flex, like they're how it used to be. Yeah, and they're using kind of like this classist, because it, it was with the whole verified shit, right? It's like you got that yeah. blue check mark. Yeah. You, you're, you're not popping. verified. Yeah, you're popping. So it's going to be the same sort of idea, but with this. Playboy, I got to hand it to you guys. I thought you guys were, you know. In not, the shits. Yeah, I thought you guys were not smart. This is probably the smartest thing I've ever seen. Round of applause for that, man. Yeah, and will they make… Will they make billions? Probably. Will they take a couple of innocent young lives? I'm not <laughs> oh, shit, in the making my of boy. this. Uh, probably, but uh, we're here to see it. <laughs> we're here for it, man. We're here to see where it goes. Uh, all the fuck. This is what I imagine. Okay, we just gave it a praise. I imagine somebody, you know, religious, crazy, uh, pro, uh, you know, Jesus is just like, nah. This is this is the second coming. This yeah. is. This is, you know, where sin lies. And to that, I have to say, man, hey, I don't know, man. You know, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not Jesus himself. I yeah, couldn't tell no. you. Yeah, I but couldn't tell you. It's inevitable, man. Like I just said earlier in the pod, um, we're humans, bro. And like, we like to fuck. We have sex. Mm. 
So what this you're is saying is you'll be on centerfold. That. God damn it. Yeah, <laughs> like, fuck. <laughs> they got him. They got him. All right, guys. Any last thoughts, baby boy? Was there anything you wanted to bring up? Anything you wanted to talk about? Uh, you know, just shout out Cardi B. For real, for that, for that, for that move. And um, I'm excited to see what Playboy is going to do. And I like I, like we said, I think it's going to be very… This is going to be very great for them. Very fruitful. And um, it's going to be good. You're going to hear more about it. No doubt. Oh, you will. Um, I hope we have a Playboy bunny that we could hopefully promote sponsor oh, on this. Oh hell week. yeah, bro! You know that'd be cool. Like an actual Playboy bunny, that'd be yeah, fucking tight. We, we need to tap in with a couple female entrepreneur, powerful women that are in the industry. Um, you know, I'm interested to talk about some, you know, some intellectual talk, brand. Just talk about you know the whole business, the whole yeah. aspect of the industry. I think that's an important topic to touch. It's a sensitive topic to touch. But hey, man, sometimes. You got to touch it. Oh, whoa, yeah. Pause. <laughs> Pause, my boy. <laughs> All right, guys. We love you. Thank you. If, uh, I hope you enjoyed this Monday morning show with Baby Boy as usual. The man, the myth, the legend. legend. And uh, yeah, thank you guys. If you do love this type of content, we have a Patreon where you get exclusive behind the scenes. You know, it's all that good shenanigans. You'll see Baby Boy on there. Check it out. For only $5 a month, the description is in the bio. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Good morning. Good morning, guys.